Welcome back. You're still on to the Literary Bar. And today we're talking about an amazing woman who is taking care of her beautiful daughter, Chizimu Zondu. Chizimu Zondu is the inspiration behind the book that we're talking about today. Not just that Noya is taking care of a child that has severe challenges, she's also taking care of her very inspirational 90-year-old mother. Welcome back, Naya. Thank you very much. So yes, before the break, we're talking about, now you have your daughter. Mm. She has a severe challenges. You're running a business. You're a single mother. Mm. How did you become this phenomena in cerebral palsy, taking care of people living with it? Okay, so you see, uh, as the woman didn't take my child, mm -hmm. so the next thing is where would I take my child? I was not conscious of the fact that she's not like the regular child. So, but, um, so Christmas was Christmas, we went home for Christmas. So I just took her home for Christmas and left her with my mom and the caregiver. So generally we came back. And then um, I tried to put her in, in, in daycare. I remember my, my neighbor, Mrs. Thompson, took me, we went around. So we put her in a daycare where her own kids were going to. So uh, that morning, you know, I had gone the previous day to inform them I was coming, it was okay. So the next day, I packed her bag, ready to pay. I got there, I left my daughter and went to work. So about 10 o'clock, they called me. In the morning? In the morning, yes, they called me. Ironically, I was expecting the call. So they called me and uh, I should come for my baby. I, I delayed because I was going somewhere. You know, I, I was going to my 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 twelve to, yeah. to shop. So I because if I if I picked her, what was I going to be doing with her? So I I delayed. So I got there about three or thereabouts. And uh, my first was she was furious. I'm just coming. I said I'm sorry. Then she said, you know, that the proprietress came and said that they don't want this baby here because other mothers will withdraw their kids. Yes, now why are, you, why, are you sounding, why are you expressing surprise? But that's true now. You see, sometimes the problem is, yes, is the parents. Yes, yes. They, don't yes. want, they don't want the, uh, a child like this in the same class with their, with their own child. But then look at it. Every mother wants her child in A class. I don't know. In my time, we used to have class A, B, C. A used to be the, you know, the very brilliant children. Uh -huh. So yeah. everybody wanted the child to be there. In the, I, I understand the, the African... Um, mm -hmm. What, what's the word? Nigerian, African way of wanting to be the best or, or, or no, maybe the, the, the best. The fact that we want to separate from children that seem to have disabilities because we think there's a stigma attached to it. There mm. is a spiritual connotation mm. that those children have certain spirits. I remember my friend's mom, we used to go and volunteer at uh, Mudupe Kool then okay. when I was in Unilag. And her mom, who's a reverend in a church, she's still a reverend in the church today, calls my friend and says, don't follow her to that place. You know, this, this, these people, they have mm. a spirit that might inhabit your womb. <laughs> and they will have a we, we, we were not even in any relationship at that point mm -hmm. that would lead to yeah, marriage. marriage. But the mom told her, they have spirits that can inhabit your womb in the future. So don't follow her there. So now I can only imagine what it mm -hmm. is. Now having that spirit so and being embodied in a child that is now staying with their yeah. kids so 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 she, so i took so i took her you know so what happened that day i cried so much because by that time Muzo was now seven months that was in january and then uh, why was i crying not because she asked me to take my child but so like already at seven months my daughter is facing stigmatization already yeah. you know so i took her i didn't know what to do so as i was stepping out um somebody called me it was a cleaner it's and for you to know it's a church i still know i still know they moved from there though but it's a church uh, it was a church um, decade it was you know from the church they created that decade so the cleaner called me that's okay what will i be doing with the baby i said i don't know i probably taking her to work then she said you know she can help me care for her while i go to work you know and it's close by the walking distance to my house so um so I said, okay, that's fine. So I thanked her. So I went home. So the next day, I packed her bag. Then I came out. You see, she had a kiosk in front mm -hmm. of, you know, the shop. So her job is just, she just cleans for them in the morning. Mm -hmm. Then she goes back to be selling her in her small kiosk mm -hmm. and all that. So, um, so when I came out in the morning, she said, I gave her the baby. She said, I want you to come inside and see my house so that I will know where she lives. Oh, okay. So I followed her, you know. You know, sometimes the very popular has very good hearts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this 
face me, I face mm -hmm. you kind of rooms as your husband puts on the lights. Yeah, that's even what you have to yes, go yeah, even in the that is yes, dark and yes. dank. Yes. So when she puts on her, you know, when she opened the window so that we can get some light in, there was another special child sitting on the on the bed there. Yeah. Knowing what I know, and I don't want her side with Sephiroth. You know the yeah, ones. The big, head, the, the big head. The big head. Yeah. So, uh, so apparently the mom had the same issue, and then she's help, she was helping to take care of them. So I lost my daughter. So we became friends. We grew. To be, the day the lady died, mm -hmm. <laughs> when I was crying, who, I'm sure people were looking at me like, "What's this?" There's her daughters. Even one of her daughters worked with me. You know, they would make Zimuzo's hair. Mm -hmm. I would leave Zimuzo with them. Uh, you know, then I used to go sing in the choir. So I would leave Zimuzo with them and go and sing and all that. So we became very close. So I started leaving Zimuzo with them. Then, you know, the kids started growing, they would go to school, they had to go to schools and all that. So the problem, getting a, I got a house girl, getting a house girl was difficult. So when Zimuzo turned one, I found a place to take her to. So I took her there. Um, they work with children with all disabilities close to me. So I would take her there and they used to close by one o'clock. Wow. So I take her by eight in the morning, one o'clock I would pick her. You know, it was affecting my business. And Imagine if you're working in a bank or so yes. how would you cope? It's very comfortable. People have cars or their housemates, mm -hmm. they will go there, the housemate will wait. Yeah, I mean, they so they close by one. Yes, I That's there. too early. Some of them, most women, you know, uh, that were there, they would just hang around there. Mm -hmm. And then, because sometimes before traffic, before you get there, you never get there by in. Because I was, I was a very punctual person. Mm -hmm. I was close by eight o'clock. I'm there. But one o'clock, you must put your, pick your child. You can bring your child by eleven o'clock. They don't care. But you must pick at one. That one. So all that made me to start thinking, what next? You know, my business was affected. I was affected. My daughter was affected. So what do I do? I couldn't find a place to put her. The regular care, daycare weren't taking her. I wasn't comfortable with this play because, first of all, uh, they have children with all disabilities. And it's confusing because, you know, you have a child who is not sitting, who is drooling. Then you are seeing another child who is running around, maybe like mm -hmm. Down syndrome, yes. child who is blind. So you are like, why is my own not like this? And back then, 17, 18 years ago, cerebral palsy, people were not talking about cerebral palsy. We were hearing of Down syndrome, mm -hmm. autism, but I said, no, I have to do something. But the challenge was, uh, how will I do that and run my business? I knew it was not just possible. And then I was a bit obsessed because um, the very people on the low class getting support for them, that is getting a therapist. I used to have somebody who used to come and work with my child at home. I was paying her. But I knew that what I was paying her, many people could not afford it. I mean, ordinary people, Mama yeah. Yika on the street, Mama mm -hmm. Noye on the street. And then, so how do I help them? How do I support them? And they used to take their children to the government hospital. Mm -hmm. You spend the whole day yes. you know, to be there yeah. for maximum 15 minutes treatment. It's never up to 15 minutes, actually. I'm just being nice. To say yes, I know, minutes. I know. So, so you, the whole day is gone. So how do I do that? So I started thinking, what I just heard was, if you can't find what you are looking for, you create it. You create it. You're supposed yeah. to be co-creators. So, and then I was reading, and I, said, I was reading. Back then, internet wasn't what it is today. But I had the privilege of having internet because that was, was I, the business my ex-husband and I were into. So I, I was able to you know, access the internet. I said, seeing that uh, it's nothing new. They've been talking about cerebral palsy since 16, 1866. Wow. You know, that since CP came into the medical lexicon. And the first CP center, they started in about 1940-something in Australia, you know. And these parents, so I started talking to parents. In fact, I printed a, a flyer. I would take it to hospitals. And I would go to parents. Can we come together? In fact, the first flyer I printed was, um, what do you want to know about cerebral palsy? Parents should meet me, let us see that. But no parents came. So I said, well, you don't have to wait for them. Mm -hmm. Start something. So I decided I was going to close my business. Of course, when I say I announced to people I was closing my business, it was as if my daughter had CP. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, friends were like, ah, how can you leave the known to an unknown? Mm -hmm. And I didn't have answer to that. More so because I said it wasn't going to be a business. You know, it was going to be charity from mm -hmm. day one. And why did I say it would be charity? Because most parents or families who have children like this, particularly the ones on the lower yes. economic spectrum, 
is very expensive all over the world. CP is the most expensive congenital disorder to manage all over the world. If your child is having seizures, you have to buy antigen medication, you go for therapy, then you, you know. So how can you really function? So then I said, the people said, how will you get the money? I said, I in fact, in my naivety, I said, I will have a business that will support us because back then I had a branch in Urile that was doing very well. So my plan was to shut down body thermos and really will be running to support that. But that same year, I think it was year 90, the last uh, when Fashola came in, then he he started working on the on that uh, Apapo, that uh, um, Badagri Expressway, and of course my business was affected. You know they broke down so many houses. So so to me it was a sign that you don't need to run this business at all. Mm -hmm. So. Then I said, well, when they abandon children like this, because there's this belief you throw, that... You throw them away. Yes. So if they abandon, where do they end up? Orphanages. And the, who supports them in orphanages? People do. So they will come and support them with me. The only difference is that these ones will have their parents with them. And the, their parents will... In fact, these ones will gain because their parents will give them that love. The only friends are not paying. So it was difficult initially, you know, convincing people. Um, of course, thank God for my family, uh, and the, I don't know if they, I'm not sure they liked it, but they didn't have a choice. You know, my father brought us up to know that once your sibling is not doing, is not stealing, is not doing something bad, you must support, you know, you must support her. You cannot, uh, you must cry with your, with yes, your brothers. With, yes. So that's, you know, helped a lot. You in, know. In, in setting up. In setting, setting up, yes. So mm -hmm. that's helped. So um, I started with my daughter. I, I stayed reading. Then I think uh, Promise came, Amino came. So whatever I do, it, they used to tell us in the in the hospital, mm -hmm. Madam, watch me when you go home. Do the same for your daughter. So yeah, I remember yeah. that um, you were taking Zim uh, abroad for, for therapy, therapy. therapy. Yes, and uh, and eventually those people started coming to Nigeria. Yes, yes. So that mm. you know you can spread this. I'll call it love, but uh, helping other people access. Uh, this treatment this i've been yes. to your center mm -hmm. when it was much smaller <laughs> yes in, in uh, Surulia, yes yes you know um you know when you have i think whatever you do in life it has a lot to do with the kind of family you are from mm -hmm. right i couldn't do anything for zimuzo that I'm, i wasn't going to do for any any mm -hmm. child that you know you know that uh, that is uh, accessing uh, support from the center mm -hmm. so when I started taking the results to abroad, I started reading. I started looking for options. As if I knew what mm. will happen today, that all the physiotherapists will be flying out of Nigeria. <laughs> because, yes, I started looking for options, mm -hmm. alternatives. Mm -hmm. So I found, you know, most therapies I see, as I said, I had access to internet. Mm -hmm. So I will speak to them, and I, will, and I want to go and see what is happening there. And, ha and you wonder where I was getting money from. I had friends. Mm -hmm. I remember a friend invited me to, in, in Abuja. The other day I was thinking of them, and I, I had to send a very mm -hmm. nice note to them. You know, and uh, right in their sitting room, back then, they raised over a million for me. Mm -hmm. They just invited their friends. And I told my story. And she, he told them that I, I want to travel. You know, of course, back then, Naira wasn't what, you know, what it is today. It was more, it had more, uh, more value. So, so at this time I went, I, I remember the first one of the first therapies I accessed was a, a Scotland technique. So I told the lady that, okay, I want to try out this thing on my daughter, mm -hmm. but I need to try it out on the children I was working with. And she was okay because she too had a child. Who was Yes, uh, yes. Uh, Wait, no, you know, we don't want to give everything away in this upcoming okay. book. But I just want to let people know that um, you're offering the services it's free yeah. mm. you and even for 14 years yeah. yes and you even give training to the parents mm. so that when they come or people who are interested in volunteering and learning this mm. Mm. but i also want to let people know that from all of this in surulu you now have a purpose-built center for cerebral palsy in lakawi yes from surulu you know when uh, you know rents when the place was getting small my daughter was getting we, we started off as daycare how many people are there now now we have 13 children that are in the boarding then i have about 18 staff working with me 
and uh, when we in body summers we had a lot more children mm -hmm. you know we just moved to Lakwe, so it's mm -hmm. like we are just starting you know starting afresh so um when it became obvious that you know we must grow mm -hmm. so we started looking for accommodation you know bigger accommodation i actually started from where i was running mm -hmm. my restaurant mm -hmm. you know so i now had to we we saved up money strictly donations from people um you had a work you had a work yes, yes we had several we had a, mm -hmm. a, a number of works you know then we did this campaign in where i was asking for 1000 naira yeah and uh, we started building covid was good you know because covid i think covid made people to form groups and the people started sharing our videos and then we were able to you know to we built we built in two years actually um we built the place and we moved in how many children yeah. will your center take and um, when we when we finally complete this the place and we get support the place should take at least 40 children at a go at a go you know living as boarding but i'm very slow at that i will mm -hmm. tell you quickly because um people funders don't give you money for you know to for salaries mm -hmm. which is what you know people need to look at we don't value caregivers yes that, so we yeah, don't pay them we don't pay them well people can bring you rice and beans bring you all sorts of things to feed the children but they forget that somebody has particularly you know um care, particular children in this spectrum somebody has to cook the food Someone has to put mm -hmm. the food in the child's mouth. Someone has to clean the child up. You have this assistant, mm -hmm. the fair gentleman who, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, what's his name? Athan. Mr. Mr. A. Mr. A. Yeah, yeah a shout out to Mr. A because <laughs> I remember I, when I was volunteering at your place, yeah. I remember that he was so kind in, mm -hmm. in putting me through. You mentioned COVID, and which is where I'm also going to give a shout out to Mama Noye. Mm -hmm. Because at a point where you were concerned about Zim, your mom said some things to you that Zim has actually, God actually sent Zim into your life to help you find your way. Yeah. My mom has always been very supportive, straight, you know, I mean, what, what your I mean, mom is 90. Yeah, she's 90, <laughs> yes. And then, right from, you know, when Zim was a baby, you know, ordinarily the average African mom would not, would have easily said, take her back. Disconnected and detached. Yes, from, from her, yes. But from the one, I remember then, back then my father wasn't, you know, was now towards his end time. My mom was, you know, his caregiver. And she said, if not for my mom, if not for your dad, I should take this child from you and mm -hmm. care so you mm -hmm. can go have your life. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, recently, you know, in my conversation with her, and uh, I was like, Zim is too much wahala, you know, carrying her, you know. I was saying that playfully, and she said, Without Zimuzo, you, you won't be. In fact, Zimuzo is your visa. <laughs> yes, yes. That's like everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. That she's the one that makes them give you visa. Any country you travel to, that's a, that's Look at all the luck she's brought to you. Mm -hmm. Look at, you know, you're able to build this, which is true. Yeah. Without Zimuzo, I didn't know what was said. But now her name is like a prophecy come yeah, it's through. Yes, like a prophecy come through because uh, she, she kind of chatted this path. Without her, I didn't know what was cerebral palsy. I never heard the word until that, that fateful 27th day of And now you're a champion February. for people. Well, I don't know about champion. Yes, yes. But, so. you know, it has enabled me to, for instance, I sit as the chairperson of International Cerebral Palsy Society, a society that has about uh, 52 members mm -hmm. from, from different countries, you know, and I'm the chairperson. And uh, it's, uh, sometimes I'm sitting there, I'm like, it's humbling, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, and, uh, you know, uh, sometimes they have meetings you know maybe some scientists are having meetings and they want to hear from what they call people with lived experience you know about this condition maybe they want to change certain things that look not as medications or something and i'm called oh no here what do you think about this i'm like without this girl <laughs> you know <laughs> so, you, so that's you were, a fact mm -hmm. yeah you are doing so well um people of our generation were were in a sandwich and you are in that sandwich even more than most because you're in between your mother and your children. Mm -hmm. In your case, you're living with a 90-year-old mom and a severely uh, disabled child. child and and, and our other 12 other disabled children I yes. live with every day. Yes, but part of being a sandwich generation is mm -hmm. that you're caring for your mom, you're, you're caring for your elderly parents, mm -hmm. you're caring for your young children, mm -hmm. even if they're not disabled, but mm -hmm. you're right there in the middle. Yeah. And I wonder how you as knowing cope it's very important mental health 
how do you know, caregivers need their mental health checked. Lot, yes. You know. Yeah. Um, how do I cope? I, I like to read. I, I like to do my exercise. I, I do yoga mm -hmm. every morning or most mornings. Then I take, I, I run, I walk. Uh, you know, most mornings I try to do like five kilometers. Sometimes I do like six kilometers. You eat healthy. I eat healthy. I see I your post. Healthy. Yes, I eat <laughs> healthy because you know I found out in I think some five years ago thereabouts. Um, I found out first of all I had a spondylitis. Mm -hmm. Then uh, that's, my, a, that's a big name. Don't explain. We will okay. we'll do then, that on another day. Okay. Then uh, my my BP was going high. Was well, actually high. I didn't know that. That's something caregivers, please, you must be careful about that. You see, when you are caring for for for, for somebody, you tend to neglect yourself. Yes, yes. But I remember Doctor Gono. She's just a wonderful woman. She's a doctor that's you know actually I can't writes about cerebral palsy center without talking about Dr. Gone because she helped me to manage these children. Mm -hmm. She never distanced them. She, you know, most doctors, when you're working with a child like this, they're like, why are you this? They're not saying it, but mm -hmm. their action is like, why are you disturbing with this child? Mm -hmm. So, but she goes out of her way, the way she fights for them. So, so this day I, I came in and she said, hmm, be unwise, she's spooky mm -hmm. Do you actually check yourself? I said, no, I'm fine. You know, sometimes I have this headache, you know, she said, you know what? If you don't do your full medicals, I'm never going to touch any of your children when you bring them. In fact, right here, just sit down. She checked my baby. My baby was... Wow. I'm telling you. Then she sent me. She said, I have to go to... I went to prison to run all my tests. Then, of course, by the time she looked at my baby, was high. So she called the pharmacist, uh, Valerie, give her this medication. And just watch her take it. Then go home. I should drive from there and come back about two or three hours. Then we talk thereafter. I should go. So when I came, she, she spoke to me for a long time. You need to take care of yourself. Yes. Because if something happens to you, what's going to happen what's to, to your children? daughter, uh, yeah. base, and all that? So, so I went home. So I came back. We spoke. And then, then I said, you know, so I did all my medicals. Everything was fine except my, my cholesterol was high. My BP was, I said, uh, she's going to place me on medication. I said, no problem. But I don't take medication. No doctor. She said, you must sick. It's okay. So I went home. So I read because I like reading. So I said, okay. You know, um, if you can't take medication, you have to do a lifestyle change. Yes. So I have to change my feeding. Mm -hmm. I took off salt for like two, three months. I wasn't taking salt at all. At all. Initially, it was difficult. Yeah. So I did. I took off salt. You know, I did so many things. I stopped taking any all these carbonated drinks. Not everything. So, of course, I went for my review six weeks after. She did a review. Ah, you're taking your medication. I said, I told you I don't take medication. But she said, that, so whatever you are doing is good. So, yeah. I do that. I yes. don't, you know, I don't. I don't. Yes. So, I try to do. So, that's what so I do. So, if mm. you're not going to take your medication, yes, please yeah. discuss that with your doctor. Mm. Uh, Noya is a working medical encyclopedia. <laughs> so, Noya, in, um, we're going to round up this conversation. But um, in rounding up, I want you to speak to parents. I don't want to do the general Nigerian, but parents who have children living with cerebral palsy, which is an area that you have authority in, what should they do? What should they look out for? Uh, the one who's pregnant. Uh, sometimes people will say that when you have to take a vaccination, oh, it causes all of these things. I'm no. not an anti-vaxxer. No, but I'm just saying, what are you going to tell parents in looking at Zim, uh, they'll, they'll put up a picture. Zim is 18, had this beautiful mm. photo shoot for her. And, and I know that part of the joys of motherhood is your child, by now, you and Zim will be struggling for your clothes, That's makeup, all those seen. things. And yeah. when you were doing her 16th birthday and then 18th, but you said she's going to have the photo shoot. She's mm. going to dress up. You're an example of what a mother is. I'm a human being. Mm. You had... If you had rejected uh, Zim, you were justified mm. in, if you mm. said, I don't want God, mm. you brought her in, go sort her out, but mm. not me. Mm. What are you going to tell parents who are living with children that have cerebral palsy? You see, uh, when your child has cerebral palsy, right? particularly if she's on this spectrum, um, it's not a walk in the park. It's painful. You know, it's a uh, spectrum again, spastic, uh, spa spastic, spastic plagia, plagia. you know, and um, she has, she's affected both physically and mentally. Yeah. 
um, you know, it's difficult to accept, but you know, I always say that when you get to the what I call the bus stop of acceptance, mm -hmm. that is when you begin to look for what like you stop asking why me. I begin to ask what now. What do yes. I do? Yeah. So it was at that station that I started asking what do I do. I want to begin to ask what you do, and the answers oftentimes never comes. It's it's a con every year you will mourn, mm -hmm. you will mourn the baby that never wore those that wore those beautiful dresses that you know you never watched her work with them mm -hmm. then when her mates are entering secondary school and uh, when her mates starts having crushes mm -hmm. when her mates you know when you want to sneak into her phone to check you know <laughs> who, who, yes i have friends mm -hmm. now we yes, just you yes. know uh, i remember one told me that uh, when she noticed her daughter and she asked her, she said mommy don't go there mm -hmm. no one is my crush yeah so you know I say, I see now me, I can't, nobody can crush on my daughter. Mm -hmm. So we miss that. You will miss when her kids are, when her miss are getting married, when her kids are entering university. When I adopted my daughter, I planned. From the one I was, I remember I opened an account with a, a, a UBA, number 20, uh, body from us. And every single day, I was saving 15,000 Naira, every day. And why I was working towards her 17th, I said, you know, she was going to go abroad and study. And the only way I knew was I would pay her school fees and I would get a student visa. So I was planning towards that. So you can imagine my disappointment. I have my sister's uh, children who are her age mates. They now, I mean, her, one is her age mate, older by four months. She's just entered the university. Mm -hmm. So we mourn that. But I, I said I built a university. My daughter is not going there. We built a university. Yes, so the what CP I said, yeah, the CP center. So I tell parents, you can channel that pain to something. Mm -hmm. So what I have succeeded in doing was is channeling the pain of all those losses mm -hmm. to building this cerebral palsy center, starting it. And then each time I look at the children and parents that I'm able to support. I get that satisfaction. So I tell parents, you don't. Have, some of you, the CP center is something I say. I said it here again in public view. I want to replicate through parents. I've spoken to them individually. There's a limit to how many children we can manage effectively. Mm -hmm. Managing one child, you, you know how difficult it is to manage your one child. Much less so many. So it is us. This jackpot we want to jackpot abroad is the parents who build that. Again, I read the history. One thing I do, I read the Once I see any society abroad, all disabilities, I go and read their history. You find out that it is parents, either they come together yes. and build that. So we can do that. You can replicate that. Mm -hmm. And that's where you don't feel so much pain. So, like this morning, I was looking at my daughter as I was leaving her. And then I was looking at the ch other children that she's in. Is I can be here because I have a place where I know she's safe. Mm -hmm. And not only that, I'm able to, uh, to provide employment for yes. people who wake up every day. They're happy. They have somewhere they're going to work. So if you have a child, you will, you will cry. I see cry, but not so much. I don't cry anymore. Right? But at the beginning, you will cry every day. But don't cry so much that you are beclouded. Mm -hmm. So one important way is to channel that pain into something. Parents can come together, form like a cooperative, how will I manage this child? Yes. Because if the child that leaves you, what happens? Or if yes. the child gets old? Mm -hmm. Because some of them, I have a friend, her daughter is 40. Wow. Yes, in fact, she made me to start boarding facility. Because when I started CP Center, what, what's, her, what's her condition? Cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy. She's she, complete, she completely dependent, completely. Just like Zimuzo. I met her then when Zimuzo was like, uh, I think that was about 14 years ago before we started CP, before we started boarding facility. So I visited them. Mm -hmm. Somebody had called me from their home. They were looking for a boarding facility. Back then, uh, the lady was like 20 something. So when I got to their house, I, I went around Lagos looking for a decent place I couldn't find. So I said, can I visit? They said, yes. So I took Zim and we sat down. The woman was looking at my daughter, and I was looking at her daughter. I'm like, you know, in the next 10, 20 something, Zimza will be like this. And I'm sure she was looking at Zim like, oh, she remember when her daughter was this small. <laughs> so I asked her, what did you do? Mm -hmm. She did nothing. So I went home, and I sat myself down, and fast-forwarded 
my mm. age 10 15 years i said i one girl will ask me to what did you do mm. yes. so 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 i had to start boarding facility mm. and every day i'm glad i did because i'm able to manage zimuzo much better because you know to get a house help to come home yeah it's more difficult than having somebody just come to work and close yeah, work and then go and you create people who have who have made it like it's, it's even a, a career path for them have who have worked with for seven years you know mm. that kind of a thing so, so so please if you have a child with cp it's painful i yes. wouldn't lie to you but you can channel that pain yes into something. if if noya could do it yeah we can you can yes if it. i can i always say i have so many things to my disadvantage you know mm. in nigerian setting mm -hmm. she's not your daughter you are separated you know and you're able but, to but here you are to triumph above that so so i god think everybody that. can do yes we thank god for that so mm -hmm. uh in closing we just want to again really acknowledge chizi mozondo as truly um god's angel who's who actually came around to help you open up this path to help other people mm -hmm. because without her I'm sure by now it's Delicante all over the, the whole place or even no. other places. The Delicante would have closed though. Yeah, maybe I'm saying maybe other yeah. businesses. Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm. So many other businesses I would have maybe you know, you know, like particularly like woman, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 something else. Yes. <laughs> so um like I said with yeah. the Chinese, you know, the word crisis means both um the issue, the problem and the solution. Mm. It's all in one. So even though this this was a challenge. This is still a challenge, but every day you try to find avenues to, to triumph. So I just want to thank you for your time today and for all that you do. I always tell you that you're an amazing woman. Yeah, you say that. And, but, um, I wish I could believe and, so. And I can believe obviously, it. I want to acknowledge that um, that wonderfulness. You thank know that you. amazing thing and allowing God to use you to, to do this. So I just want to ask everyone out there. To please uh, follow Noyet. Her address, her social media handle is going to be up so that you can follow her. You can support the CP Center. You should see their center in Lakawe. I've seen pictures. I never reached there, but you know, <laughs> when we were in studio, I was, yeah, I was yeah, a volunteer. Yeah, so yeah, 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 so yeah, I just want to true. thank mm -hmm. you. So thank you, Noya, for being here and sharing your story with the world. And to you out there, I really appreciate your time. The best part of Africans is our sense of community. The vulnerable and the elderly are part of that community. Let's take care of them seriously. Remember that the literary bar is always open. For more, please follow us on Facebook, X, and Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. You can watch us on DSTV channel 408 and on YouTube. Do make your life a great story. My name is Chinidu.